Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Monday, it is April the 15th, and I want to talk about a company that I've never talked, uh, talked about before or uh, covered before. And um, this particular company is involved in real assets. Uh, I like real assets. These include uh, things like oil and gas. In other words, uh, if you're producing something that people use every day uh, and you're producing and doing business in real assets, then I like your company. So this is one that you could possibly um, put on your watch list. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily buy it right away unless you're day trading, in which case you can have some fun. Um, but the uh, company is called CRH. It's headquartered out of Ireland. And um, this company is a leading provider of building materials. This is from their website. Um, the essential partner for road and critical utility infrastructure, commercial building projects, outdoor living solutions, etc. And you can buy uh, CRH's shares, which um, are listed on the New York Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange. It's a Fortune 500 company. So it's quite large. How large? So uh, in 2023, they generated revenue of almost $35 billion. They employ almost 80,000 people and they have a footprint in 29 different countries. Uh, over here on this little map, you can see that the operations span 29 countries and in four continents. We are the largest building material supply business in North America with operations in 48 states and seven Canadian provinces. So pretty much all of uh, North America, excluding Mexico. We are the largest building material supply company in Europe with operations in 23 European countries. So pretty much all of Europe. And we also have regional leadership positions in Asia. So uh, not a small company by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's quite large. It's a mid cap um, company from an American point of view, but uh, as it's based in Ireland, it's a large cap value stock. Currently on the uh, New York Stock Exchange, and I snapped this screenshot over the weekend. So this was as of the closing price on Friday last week, which would have been uh, April the uh, 12th. The uh, stock was trading at around $80. The company's market cap, $57 billion. It's got a PE ratio that's slightly high, 19. We'd like to be sort of at 15 or 16 or below, uh, giving us uh, our first snapshot indicate, in indicator that the uh, stock price of the company might be a little bit on the high side. Um, but that really just um, is more related to your timeline, right? Or your time frame for investment. If you are planning to uh, buy the company and um, own the company for a uh, medium term period of three to five years or so, then whether it's trading at $80 or $90 doesn't make much difference. It pays a small dividend, $1.40 uh, on the current stock price is only yielding 1.68, so 1.7%. It's trading high. So on this 52 week range it's near the all, uh, the 52 week high of 88 bucks. Uh, you can see that uh, right at the bottom in the middle here, it's uh, very much owned by institutions and no one really is selling um, CRH short, so uh, there are not a lot of people think that there's much downside from where it is trading currently. On the far right hand side here, you can see the graphs. The uh, colorful lines show you the three major indices in the United States, the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. And you can see how CRH PLC, PLC publicly limited corporation or public liability company. I'm not too sure, maybe you can tell me in the comments exactly what PLC means. But anyway, the company is CRHPLC and it has comfortably outperformed the indices. So let's take a look at the analysts here. And one of the uh, analyst organizations I like probably more than most is Morningstar. So if we look at Morningstar's last report, which is quite current because um, the uh, last analyst report that they did, equity analyst report was February 15th and the quantitative equity report was April 12th. So just a few days ago, Morningstar is currently rating the stock three stars and saying it's slightly overvalued with a fair value of around $77.20. If you put it on your watch list and you think that you might want to buy it, you could always put in a stop buy order, maybe at around $80 or so, or otherwise you can just wait to get lucky and see if it pulls back to around 77 and then pick up some shares. Otherwise, as I said, if you're going to hold it for a medium term, three to five years or so, you can just buy it and hold it. The short term sentiment and the intermediate, uh, intermediate term sentiment for the uh, technical guys is mostly bearish. In other words, we expect a little bit of pullback from where it is currently. So it's six bucks, right? So it's currently trading at around $83 or $82, $83. If it pulls back $6, that's, um, you know, seven or 8%. Uh, 
before it might hit the low and then start climbing again. Um, that's probably of more interest to the day traders than for people who are just buy and hold. Uh, the analysts overwhelmingly have a, uh, uh, a buy rating on it. We have five strong buys and eight buys and only two holds uh, right now. Uh, as of today, I'd sort of be in that hold category unless you have some spare cash sitting around and you want to allocate it to a real asset, then CRH might give a little bit of diversification away from things like oil and gas and related stocks. Future performance estimate here. So looking how um, CRH is performing against its 50-day and 20-day moving average, uh, you can see it's about to sort of cross. So right in the middle of the screen, I put this green arrow here, and you can sort of see CRH is getting close to um, that 50-day and moving average. And then you can see the uh, expected range for the stock price sort of around the $80 where it is today, up to around $110 or so is its future prediction from a technical analyst point of view. Um, active events. So uh, looking at this chart here, there's not a lot that you can uh, see here, except for the fact that it might be a little bit bearish. And the reason for that is that the uh, constantly adjusted head and shoulders top that um, CRH is currently showing us for the technical guys. Um, April 9th, we had a target price of 77.75 approximately. And um, a couple of days later, we had 77.60. So sort of 15 cents down from there, right? 79, 78, 60, so 40 cents down from there. Um, so that's the sort of target range right now in the very high 70s. So if you want to buy it and maybe wait a few days, put it on your watch list and see if it dips below 80, then you could probably get in and then just hold it for a longer period of time. Support can be found at 58 bucks. Resistance can be found at 83.60. Of course, that's where we are right now. The stock price for a long position, uh, as I mentioned, if you want to put in a stop buy order, you can maybe put it in at around 80 or just below or so. They say 77.94 is the current stock price for long positions as of April 13th. In the intermediate term, uh, we can see it is strong bearish evidence. So uh, we expect it to pull back just a little before it will probably grow again. Key measures here, so earnings per share, um, it looked very, very good in 2021. It took a little bit of a dip in 22 and 23, but it was still positive. 2020 was an outlier for almost everybody as a result of the pandemic. The net income growth, similarly, uh, 2021 was a very, very good year for net income growth. In 2023, they actually went negative 17.71. Dividend growth, we saw a huge uptick here. Uh, I'm not sure because I haven't uh, gone into the history of the company to see why CRH um, went red in 2020, but I'm assuming that because of the pandemic, they might have cut the dividend in order to preserve some cash because no one knew exactly where we were going at that point in time. At the bottom, if you look at the uh, price earnings ratio, so we have four columns here because we're comparing, comparing CRH to three of its peers. I'm not going to talk about the peers because I haven't looked at them at all. I've only looked at CRH for this sort of uh, snapshot analysis. Uh, the PE ratio that I mentioned at the start, you know, 18, 19 is a little bit rich. We want to see it more sort of in a 15, 16 range or maybe even below. Below that would be cheap um, based on the PE alone as a metric or indicator. The price to book, CRH currently appears to be slightly overvalued at its current stock price. Uh, again, these columns on the right, I'm ignoring them because they are the peer comparisons. But we see a price to book ratio of 2.7. Um, so the uh, average 5.7 return on equity uh, below the construction and raw materials industry average, right? So the return on equity has been uh, lagging a little bit. Breaking down the uh, return on equity, CRH has a profit margin of 8.84%, an asset turnover of 75 times and leverage of 2.3 times. So that's where we are from a return on equity point of view. The uh, difference between the two is the price book ratio is for the most recent quarter and the return on equ equity is a trailing 12 months DTM. If you look at the debt to capital, which is also for the most recent quarter, 37.59, it sort of seems to be in line with, uh, with the industry. It's not an industry I'm intimately familiar with, but it seems to be as if everyone, including their peers, are sort of at that same level. If we look at the financial strength, and of course, by now you will know that I always look at debt, Right, so here we have that debt to capital ratio for the most recent quarter of around 37%. The most critical things for me are the quick ratio down at the bottom or the current ratio if you prefer. The quick ratio tells me how much cash or cash equivalents it has compared to how much 
accounts payable they are in the next sort of 30 days or so. It needs to be greater than one, that's 1 1.26, so that's very good. Uh, the industry, on the other hand, is at over two, which is even better. But for CRH specifically, uh, 1.26 is positive and that's good. However, when you look at the interest coverage ratio of 51.14 times, then uh, the company will have absolutely no problem and uh, will be comfortable in terms of repaying its debt. The earnings per share growth has been improving, but it's below the industry average, right? So uh, here we have a pretty good number. The most recent earnings per share was 4.36, was it, which was an increase of 24.6 over the previous year. It's pretty good, it's improving, but it's uh, still lagging its peers a little bit. Sales growth, CRH has been able to gain market share by growing sales faster than the industry average. Now, there's an interesting point here, which I'll just divert for a minute away from CRH. There are only two ways that you can really grow your sales. One is organically, one sale at a time to a new customer and preferably net new profitable revenue. And the other way is inorganically, which is through acquisition. CRH has made quite a number of acquisitions, which has, kept it, uh, which has allowed it to keep its um, sales growth growing and growing quite nicely. The income growth, there's been no clear trend in income growth at CRH over the past five years. A couple of snapshots here. I'm not going to go into depth on any of these here. Um, I'm looking for uh, outliers or anomalies in, in terms of looking at the quick snapshot. The revenue is a steady increase. There's a little dip here. That dip uh, coincides with 2020. So again, for what it's worth, you can mostly ignore that. Uh, as a log scale, you can say it's sort of trending on the upside. Revenue and earnings is pretty good. The value chart is a little bit different because um, valuation is usually based on a DCF, so a defined um, uh, defined cost uh, calculation. Sorry, I've just gone blank there for a minute. Um, the cash and equivalents, uh, not too bad, $6 billion. The dividends have uh, trended up um, and the interim revenue and EPS looks pretty good too. In general, if you look at these graphs, they sort of trending on the upside and it looks pretty good. Uh, when you buy into a company like uh, CRH, uh, this, these are the types of things that you're buying. In addition to the fact that um, they are producing goods that uh, are critical to infrastructure projects. Um, when you buy a little bit of CRH, you're also buying into factories, including this particular one. I just took the snapshot from their website, the Teresa plant in Rizal in the Philippines, an integrated cement plant on the outskirts of metropolitan Manila. So, um, you know, uh, all in all, uh, this is sort of my first glance at uh, CRH. Uh, I'm always looking for a little bit of diversification within my portfolio. And I try to stay away from uh, things that are, um, you know, sort of flavor of the month or, or uh, you know, popular uh, for whatever reason, right? So I want to uh, not only be counterintuitive, but also want to stay away from the herd effect, where if everybody is rushing into one particular stock, uh, I take the opposite view as a contrarian and say, um, let me see if I can find value elsewhere. CRH looks to me as if it's a stock with um, good value that you can hold in your portfolio as a foundational stock. In other words, not gonna make you rich, uh, but it's gonna probably do okay. Considering where the price is currently at around 80 bucks, if you had to hold it for three to five years, you're probably gonna end up with a stock that's trading at around you know, between 120 and 150. So you could get to a, a, a close to doubling of your initial um, investment. And of course, if you also uh, apply your dividend that you receive, albeit small, and buy more stocks when you receive those dividends, you can compound and grow it even faster. And if we can manage to get 15% uh, compounded growth over a period of say five years, then your investment doubles every five years. So um, in essence, uh, you know, um, you can let me know if you uh, have a position in CRH or if you are uh, interested or if you think this is an interesting stock or if there are other stocks that I probably uh, could compare it to or with. And maybe what I can do is, um, if it's of interest to you, I can do a CRH versus four competitors or peers uh, as an example in one of my next videos. And we can sort of see which one of the five would be the better buy. For me uh, right now, CRH is interesting. Uh, it's a potential buy. That's why I said at the start, put it on your watch list. I don't know if I'll buy it right away because there are too many uh, less expensive stocks I can buy that could probably produce a greater return. But it is an interesting stock. Add it to your watch list, see where it goes and let me know what you think in the comments. That's all for today. Take care. Bye-bye.